First requirement for model deployment is that all your code must be able to run not only on your local machine predicting on CSV files sent to you over Slack, but it must be stable, bug-free, documented and capable to run in a completely new environment predicting on unseen data. This is the last out of four videos in a sequence on complete data science project walkthrough. If you haven't seen the previous videos, be sure to check them out. Lots of cool stuff there. There are different models serving complexity levels and we'll go over all of them, but there is a bare minimum number of artifacts you must produce for any deployment option. A list of dependencies necessary to execute your program. This is defined in the requirements file. And make sure to mention the exact libraries versions because as the time goes by, libraries evolve, function calls change and your code breaks. Data transformation steps must account for potentially different data which was not available during training. For example, if your categorical variable was one hot encoded, then if in production it suddenly receives a totally unseen category, then your one hot encoding script must know exactly what to do in order not to produce a data set with different structure which will not be accepted by your trained model. This is very important and frankly the most complicating part because when you are provided with training data you have a discrete set of variables and their distributions but when new data starts coming in you never know what it will contain. Most of this can be handled by mature open source libraries which all have fit transform and transform methods. But if you have custom code, it must know exactly how to handle all the possible situations. Clear and standardized doc strings for all the classes, methods and functions. This is just production code quality standard. A logical project structure would need organization of your code, models and supplementary files. Last but not least, a manual, a readme file explaining how to run this code. I think any developer looking at this must have a clear understanding of how this works. Don't ever skip this step, because even you as a developer will thank yourself a few months down the road maintaining this model. Now to the deployment options in ascending effort order. An easiest one is just passing your well-documented and structured archive to the customer, and they use it the way they like. This works when a client is mature enough to handle deployment on their own. Or maybe they don't even need to host this model anywhere because it is intended to be used only maybe once per year and then the customer would just collect the data and feed it to the model according to the manual that you have supplied. The next option is model hosting in a public cloud and creating an API. The reason this has a modest complexity level is because any big public cloud is well documented, has convenient tools to handle resources and requests has great support and an endless list of answer questions within the community. This deployment option will require familiarity with one of the major cloud service providers as well as containerization skills. A model deployed this way will be running on some virtual machine 24-7 and the data can be sent for inference via an HTTP request with predictions coming back as a JSON string. Another possible requirement could be a no-code UI to inference the model a web interface where a customer could come in and manually input the data and receive predictions in the web browser. I've made two coding videos on these subjects. We can see the download prediction button, click download and here are our predictions in the download folder. It's really simple, it will just run the server.py file from the app directory and initialize our API which in this case is also called an app. Check them out in the description below if you need to. Here you should also keep in mind how often the model is intended to be used and what is going to be the incoming data size. This will affect the amount of allocated resources, load balancing, timeouts and other settings. The last and most complex option is model deployment into the customer infrastructure. They differ from company to company, but usually on top of the previous steps you will be required to integrate with some sort of a database to retrieve the data and send the predictions back into. You would probably be required to write daemons and triggers to inference the model according to schedule or some specific events, model monitoring, dashboarding and many other things. This is usually done in tight cooperation with the client's IT department, specifically a data engineer, a DevOps engineer, maybe a product owner to make sure that the final result satisfies the business. Today, such skills are called machine learning engineering. A decade ago, when I just started, most projects didn't go into the deployment phase. It was just static code running on somebody's laptop. Nowadays, as the field evolved, this became crucial. Nobody needs a model that cannot be integrated into the decision-making process. But don't get bogged down if you don't know all the exact technologies required. 
focus on writing bug-free, stable and documented Python engine and there will usually be a DevOps engineer by your side that will help bring it to life while teaching you a trick or two. This concludes a series of videos on complete data science project walkthrough. Make sure to watch all of them for complete context. If you want to learn data science, then check these out. If you want to be entertained, then it's this way.